Hello, YouTube. My name is Trina, and I want to try to do something different with the content that I have. Um, if you notice, the videos that I put up prior are related to the Jenkins case. And about a month ago, I was new to YouTube, and I decided to uh, try to figure out how YouTube works and the things that make people view your videos, keywords, as far as titles and things. And I just put a video out based on the Jenkins case, and I got some hits. So, I did not want to focus on that, though. But I really wanted to focus on my love. And something that I truly, um, I truly desire to educate other people about. And that is owning a non-profit. And I started mine about two years ago. And it's called Ruffin Mobile Educational Services Incorporated. And I am a nonprofit here in Massachusetts. And the services I provide are preparing, preparatory and tutoring classes to housing project residents only. And so I've been doing it for about two years and I've had uh, great success in this area. So I wanted to talk to other people out there in YouTube world and I want to talk about how to do a article organization. Okay now a couple of things. First thing is do not jump on me because I am new to YouTube and I'm new as far as cameras and equipment and things of that nature so work with me. Okay and as time goes on the videos go on because we're going to have a couple of subjects. We're going to talk about the EIN number, talk about amendments. Uh, we're going to also talk about board, your board, uh, how, to uh, how to create a board for your organization. And then we're going to talk about the big part of being a uh, nonprofit, and that is being tax exempt. That big scary form everybody's talking about. Form 1023. Well, I mastered it, so I know how to fill it out. But I'm going to show you guys how to fill it out. Now, I get paid a lot to do this for people, but I don't mind sharing this information for free because my overall goal is to make the public aware of these resources and tools when put together a nonprofit. Okay? So, um, as time goes on, I'm going to show you a couple credentials that I have. Um, I am a certified grant writer. Um, I've actually certified in two areas with the IRS. And one of the areas I got certified in is starting a nonprofit and managing a nonprofit. Um, quick history I've been in nonprofit over 20 years. I started out doing youth development. Um, also started out working with domestic violence and then just in general community development. As time went on, I decided I wanted to learn more about uh, not just putting a program together, but also how to get funding for program, and that kind of geared me over to going towards the uh, grant writing field. So, that's a little history about me, but again, I want you guys to like this video, yes, and I need you guys to share it to family, friends, co-workers, anyone who is interested in starting a nonprofit. Again. I'm new to this as far as videoing my um, videoing my, 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 my information, okay? So work with me. Some of the videos are not going to be the best, probably just starting out, but they will get better, all right? So I'm going to be focusing on this form, and I'm using my tablet, so work with me. Okay, so I live in Massachusetts, but those who live in other states, you can go on to the website. And I need you to Google the article of organization from the state that you live in. We're here in Massachusetts, okay? Now, this application is um, it's, it's intense to some people. Then again, it's not. I want to show you how to do it basic. And then I'll give you some tips and tools on how to combine the information that's going to be needed to carry on to the next levels of starting a nonprofit, okay? Now, just to show you that I am legit, I am going to just show you something real quick. Up, 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 real quick. That's my nonprofit stuff. Up, up, up. So, you see? So, all right. Here's my stamp. 
you know I'm official. It was in March 2015. So I have a nonprofit, okay? Now, the first thing about the article of organization, okay? If you see article number one, all right, I'm gonna hold up a little closer. And article number one says the exact name of the corporation is, and that means put the exact name that you want your corporation to be. Now, before you choose a name, I advise you to Google your name and to see if it's been used already. Or you can go on to the website, your city, I mean, to your, your state, and they have a Google search database for nonprofits. And you can see if your name, company name has already been used. So that avoids you from filling out the documents, putting down a name, and then going to process it, and then they're gonna tell you, no, you have to change your name because this one's already out in the field, okay? So think really hard and strong and long about your name because this will carry on forever. As long as your organization is in effect, this name will be carried on. So put a lot of thought into your name, okay? And I wanna tell people about the double Zs, the double Ts, and uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, Ebonics type of language. What I'm telling you to do, um, just figure out how you're spelling your things and just make sure it's appropriate and that is gonna be accepted by all people, okay? All people out here. So you wanna make sure you have a friendly name, you wanna have a respectable name, and you don't want to have too many Z's and T's and all that, okay? Like a hot boy, H-O-T-Z or, you know, H-O-T-T -T and all that, okay? So, now we're clear about the name. So the next thing is, as you can see, the purpose of the corporation is to engage in the following activities. All right. What they're asking you is, what are the activities that are going to be that? What are the activities that you will be providing, meaning services you will be providing to the public from your nonprofit? Now, I my nonprofit focuses on a couple of things, but mainly education. That's the main source. So I'm gonna just let you see a couple of my things real quick, okay? Please excuse the paper. I should have got a different, I have a copy, but I just grabbed that. Um, so it's a Ruffin Mobile Educational Services. Uh, we are a mobile GED program. So with GED High Set. Now High Set is the new name for GED, formerly known as GED. We do tutoring prep, okay? And so we, 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 we I'm sorry, nervous. We um, tutoring and prep preparation program designed to provide high school equivalency credentials. My program is one of a kind. We provide learning tools and resources for students to continue with higher education or employment opportunities once they complete the program. RAM, and that's the acronym for my program because my name is kind of long. RAM will also connect each student with ongoing outside resources in the areas of mental health, parenting, and job training. So what I'm saying is I educate people and prep and tutor them in the area of GED, right? Which is high set today. And I help them and prepare them with as much knowledge and tools as possible so they can pass all five exams. But once you complete my course, I am offering other services in the form of parenting. Because of that age group, I usually get people from the age of 17 to 25 and they have children. And then I also offer mental health services because I get people from 17, my oldest is 72 years old, you know, and um, I'm so proud of him. He doesn't come every day, but he comes at least once a week and he's been coming for about five months now. Um, and so we do mental health services referrals and we also do job training referrals. And so my program is kind of a cross connection. I've actually, uh, partnered with other nonprofits here and other agencies here in Massachusetts and to do a combination program kind of saying when you finish the high set training on my part can I send my students to your program 
to possibly do computer training, possibly mental, um, mental health training, um, nursing, banking, financing, whatever uh, the institution provides as far as a short-term certificate, okay? So, I want you guys to think about when you're putting together your programs or your services that you're going to provide to people, the activities, which means services that you're providing, you know, um, be in detail of exactly about what you want to provide to people, you know. I personally, I focus on tutoring prep in the area of GED, but I also offer referral services to other agencies for parenting, job training, and mental health services. So think about how you want to do that, okay? And it doesn't have to be a full page. You can actually put bullets there um, and just put a four or five key thing, key services that you will provide to people, okay? Now we're going to the next page. Now here, okay, we talk about, and this right here is your bylaws, okay? Now, I ask everyone to go and Google your state that you reside in. And I need you to look up bylaws. Usually your state bylaws are very good. That's why they're in place. And they're also in place that you can add your own. So, look up the bylaws for the program or the nonprofit field that you're trying to focus in and look at the bylaws, okay? Now, you can attach bylaws to this form, maybe like, you know, a couple of them to the form. I did not attach my bylaws because I used the state of Massachusetts bylaws. And so what I did was I put may be set forth, okay? May be set forth. Please excuse how it looks. Okay, and what that just kind of says, I am using the state of Massachusetts by laws and was set forth through them. I am applying and agreeing and I will apply that to my agency. And as time goes on, you have a right to amend your bylaws or amend your agency. Okay, so if you ever want to add or take, you can amend. All right, so for article three, four, and five. I say you can use bylaws from your state or you can create bylaws, not just create, but you can get bylaws put in order that will suffice your program services if you don't want to use your state bylaws, okay? So think about that. But at the time when I did my application, I just used the term maybe set forth, all right? And I can add on as I go along. All right, and I can change the bylaws, add take bylaws as I amend it. You have to amend it, though, okay, when you do that. So the next thing we want to talk about is, now here, you don't have to uh, truly, everything, don't leave nothing blank, basically, okay? So the effective date of the organization of the corporation shall be dated and approved by. All right, so that right there. You don't have, here in Massachusetts, it didn't apply to me, but I want you not to leave that blank if it applies to your agency. We all have different nonprofits and different program services, okay? So be very clear about that um, article there, if it applies to you or not. It did not apply to me, per se. Um, and so... You know, that's why I didn't actually um, deal with it. Now, to go to the next article, okay? Now, this article talks about the street address that your agency will be located. And right there, you would put down the address where you're located, where your company is, whether it's home or if you have an office space, okay? And then once you go there, we want to go down to the very important part here, you guys, okay? We are talking about right here, all right? And that is your board. You need your president. Excuse the video, you guys. 
treasurer, clerk, directors, slash officers, okay? And you need to have about five to seven. Um, odd numbers are the best, never even. And I'll tell you why when we talk about boards down the line in the next videos that come to pass, okay? Now, if we go further down to C, the fiscal year of your corporation shall end on the last date of the month of. Now, for me, it was November, okay? I started in March, and I did it in November was going to be for my fiscal year. You check with your IRS and find out about your, your fiscal year, your taxes, and when you want to uh, have an end-of-year fiscal year. Mine is, like I said, November, all right? So the next thing is here, the name and the business address of a resident agent, okay? And me personally, I actually uh, at the time had put in A, but I concurrently had amended it and I completed it by updating the address because I didn't have an address at the time. Um, I was just coming, really working out my home and then eventually God blessed me and I was able to get a contract with the, uh, a large public housing project here in Massachusetts, okay? So, that worked for me. But really focus on your board members um, in your 1023 form. If they are family members, you have to explain the connection between you and the family member if they're on the board and you're on the board. And at the very end, you know, which is the good part, we talk about having your signatures um, and making sure that this is not, you know, that all this information is true to the best of your knowledge and ability so we don't have no penalties or perjury, okay? And then you would sign it, all right? Now, after signing it, the very last document, we want to have contact information for the one who filled this out. And I had put my information since I am the founder and I am the president of my nonprofit, okay? So, I hope this video gave you a lot of information. We're going to be doing more videos. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, we're talking about the EIN number next. That goes with your article of organization. Thank you, YouTube. Talk to you soon.